Welcome to section 5.4, day three, total area. So understand the difference between total area and net area. For net area, what we're gonna do is take whatever's above and subtract off what's ever below the X axis. That gives us our net area, as you can see in the curve on the top. We have two areas with positive, two areas with negative. When you add the positives and negatives together, you get your net area. Well, the total area, we want the areas both above and below the x-axis. And what we basically end up doing is, as you see on the bottom picture, the stuff that's below, we reflect them across the x-axis. So they all become positive areas. And this will give us the total area of the curve. So how do we find the total area between the graph of the function y equals f of x and the x-axis over an interval a, B, analytically. What we do is we look at the zeros of F. So we take our function across our interval and see where it crosses the X axes. Then we subdivide our integral over those areas where the zeros are. So on this graph, we would have an integral from negative two to negative one. The next integral will be from negative one to one. And then the next integral will be one to two. And then we're going to take the absolute values of these integrals and add them together. So the ones that are above are already going to be positive. The one below, because we're taking the absolute value, will also become positive. And we'll add all three together and get the total area. Here it says to find the total area of the region between the curve y equals 4 minus x squared and the x axis over the interval 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3. So with this curve, you guys should realize it's a parabola that is facing down and the y-intercept is at four. So we are starting here. We wanna know where the zeros are. So we're gonna set this equal to zero and solve. And so we have four equals x squared and we get plus or minus two equals x. Since our interval is from zero to three, all we want is the x equals 2. This is where it crosses the x axis. And then if we go all the way to 3, we'll plug it into the original. We have y equals 4 minus 3 squared, which is negative 5. So 3 goes down to negative 5. Here is my curve. And what could be tricky is we want these areas right here. We want the area right here between our curve and the x-axis and the area right here. So when we do this, we need to integrate. What we'll do is we will have the integral from zero to two of four minus x squared dx plus the integral from two to three of 4 minus x squared dx. But since we have a negative area here, we're going below the x axis, we need to take the absolute value of the negatives. Technically, we would actually do this too, the way it's defined. But if we have a positive, we take the absolute value of the positive, it's just going to be positive. And now we're going to evaluate the integrals and then add them together. So the antiderivative is 4x minus x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to 2. Put that in parentheses. We're doing the whole thing. Plus, we have again 4x minus x cubed over 3 evaluated from 2 to 3. And this is what we have to be careful with. We are taking the absolute value of this. We are taking the absolute value of this. And I did forget to put this in parentheses here. So we need our parentheses around this to know we're evaluating all of it from 4x minus x cubed over 3. And then we're going to plug in. And if we plug in, we will get the following. We have 4 times 2, which is 8. Then we have x cubed, which is 2 cubed, 
over 3, which is minus 8 thirds. If we put in 0 to both of these terms, we get 0. I am going to put this in absolute value still. Then we have plus our absolute value. We plug 3 in. 3 times 4 is 12. We have 3 cubed, which is 27 over 3. And then we have to evaluate at 2, we get 8 minus, again, 8 thirds. Make sure you use those parentheses so you don't forget about the negative going to both pieces. And then when we solve this, this first piece is 8 minus 8 thirds becomes 16 thirds. And the absolute value of 16 thirds is just 16 thirds, which is negative 7 thirds. And the absolute value of negative 7 thirds is 7 thirds. And we get 23 over 3. That is my total area. You notice if we didn't do the absolute values, we would have had a negative 7 thirds for that area under the x axis. But we're taking the absolute value of that, so it makes it a positive 7 thirds. And then when we add them together, we get 23 thirds. And that is how we find the area under a curve when we want the total area not the net area. Here it says find the total area under the curve created by the piecewise function. f of x is x squared when 0 is less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. 6 minus x. We have 2 less than x less than or equal to 5. Again we have a parabola from 0 to 2. So 2 when you put in the top goes to 4. And we have a curve that goes like this. And then we're going down from 2 to 5. 6 minus 2 is 4 again, so we're at the same place. It would be an open circle, but we already have a closed circle there. And 6 minus 5 goes to 1. And we just want this area under the curve here. This area is all above the x-axis. It's all positive area. So all we really need to do is evaluate the integral in two different parts. So the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared dx plus the integral from 2 to 5 of 6 minus x dx. And then we take the antiderivatives and evaluate. We get x cubed over 3, evaluated from 0 to 2, plus 6x minus x squared over 2, evaluated from 2 to 5. Plug in 2, we get 8 thirds. Plug in 0, we get 0, so minus 0 plus. We plug in the 5, we get 30. Plug in 5, we get minus 25 halves. And we have minus, plug in the 2, we get 12. And we get minus 4 halves, which is minus 2. So now we have 8 thirds. So we get 20 minus 25 halves. Then we want to combine all these things, we have to get common denominators, and when you do all that math, you should end up with 61 over 6. This is the area under the curve. This one, everything was positive area, we didn't have to worry about taking the absolute values. For the last thing we're going to do is we're going to find the total area using our calculators. And if we use our calculators, we will use the fn int. With the old calculator, you'll see that you have to put the absolute values inside the fnn function then your f of x your function goes in between absolute value bars then you have x a and b which is your limits of integration for the newer calculators what you will end up having is this you'll have a little box your stylized desk with a little box and then in here inside here you're going to use your absolute value function in here and then your f of x goes here Okay, so your absolute value will go in the inside and this will have your dx on the outside here. Okay, so you have to put your absolute values inside the integral. Do not do it this way. If you put the absolute value on the outside, what will happen is if it will just take the entire net area and turn it to a positive instead of taking it and partitioning it inside like we did on the previous slides with the parabolas. 
So you have to put the absolute value function inside of fn int. So here, what I'd like you to do is try to plug this in your calculator and what this should look like for the newer calculators is you would have negative three to three. In here, you'd have your absolute value bars and you'd have x cosine to x, absolute value bar, and then dx. You plug that in and this is what you should get back. You should get 5.425. And that is how you use your calculator to find the numerical integration when you're looking for the total area and not looking for the net area. So total area, we have to use that absolute value inside the integral. That is all for section 5.4, day three. For this, we are looking at total area versus net area. In total area, we look at all the areas above and below the x-axis. We take the absolute values of them, add them all together. We do need to partition the integration where the zeros are, where it crosses the x-axis, and we split it up into separate integrals for each part if we have to do it manually. But we do have our calculator we can use if we're allowed to. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.